G'day everyone, Alex McKellar here for another Top Split Racing replay. This week uh, we're following our season's journey through season 3, 2022. Uh, following the big soft race that we get to do on a Saturday night in Skipjack. Uh, and this week's no different, we're at Summit Point. Uh, hot conditions all week uh, and it made the racing really quite interesting at, 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 at a good Good fun track. Well, I think a lot of people were nervous about this track. We've done a few different layouts and everything, but it was I found it a lot of fun. Um, so here's a grid. Uh, the strength field was down a bit. I think some of the Japanese guys actually had some um, some endurance racing on. So for their strength of field, they were uh, a bit uh, short on, so to speak. But uh, they did uh, manage to put on a good show regardless. Anyway, with Yamato sticking it on pole. Uh, Iglesias uh, is actually um, uh, Perez, Christian Perez's brother. Uh, I think it's David Iglesias Perez or David Perez Iglesias. I'm not sure how that works, but um, we'll, um, yeah, interesting anyway. But you can see how close it was 0 0.000. It was really, really tight at the top. Uh, of course, Perez in third. Myself managed to stick it in fourth. Um, yeah. Uh, good good position to start from on the second row. Anyway, Fratini is a new fella. Haven't raced with him before, but we did a few with him this week. Shaw, though, of course, who organises the um, uh, the racing here on a on a Saturday night. Uh, stuck it in sixth. Uh, Budgeon, and he'd be racing in seventh. And, of course, my chief rival, Vasco Sorosky, the head clown himself, down in eighth. Manu Luketa for Saybelt Esports. He was uh, a bit further back than you might uh, otherwise expect. Uh, but uh, still in it, and I was expecting him uh, to come through, certainly. I'm just trying to spot any other names. Uh, we've got some regulars in uh, Kuroda there, and Ueda at the back there, and Otsu, some of the regular Japanese drivers, of course, um, and that's what you would expect to see at the, uh, the Japanese soft race. Uh, makes sense when you think about it, really, doesn't it? Anyway, let's, um, let's dive right into it. I will grab the cockpit view for the start of the race. Grab the race view on the battle box there. 23 laps around it, just over a minute per lap. Let's get cracking. Reasonable start, uh, which I was having with, sort of cover the inside to keep uh, Fratini behind me uh, disinterested for want of, a, want of a better term. The Perez brothers in front, uh, chasing down Yamato, of course. Yamato continuing his strong performance in quality. Perez is not the strongest qualifier, but geez, he can race and he can get through. Down it's turn four for the first time, very much feeling out the tyres and how the grip level is, uh, and seeing what the conversation in this front pack's going to be like. Uh, and I've got to admit, when I was doing this at the time, I, I forgot to reset everything after quali. I have a, a bit of a routine where I try to minimise distractions during quali. You can see I'm already starting to move to the centre of the track to keep uh, Fratini uh, again not interested in uh, overtaking but you can see my run through that uh, second to last and then ultimately the last corner was not great for Tini showing that he's willing to be patient and sit uh, as Perez oh and this is where I made a big mistake that was a race defining mistake there missed my braking marker while I was trying to get my overlays and stuff sorted and then oh tragedy lap two we'll go back and have a look at that Racing's pretty tight there, but uh, I think think that was pretty much all my fault was the, the conclusion that I came to as Budgeon goes through. But you can see what I mean by race defining for more than just me as well. Uh, I was straight on the radio there saying to Fratini, sorry, I think that was all my fault. Uh, I don't think I, I managed the tight line through there. He was very good about it. He said, uh, you know, he could have left more room and he's right. Uh, that comes under the context of making your own luck, but um, yeah, uh, not uh, not one of my finest moments. And now we're chasing down Budgeon, and quite frankly, at one and a half seconds up the road, the Perez boys and Yamada, they're gone. With Perez on the front, uh, the uh, more senior in skippy terms, 
I think he might be the older brother. I'm not sure. Uh, but if with him on the front, uh, we're no, co no hope of catching uh, unless they started battling. And Yamato's not one to battle. It was only whether the sibling rivalry kicked in. You see, Luqueda was lost two tenths through that first corner. He's moved up a few already. Like he's moved up four spots already um, from his poor qualifying as we uh, duck down into turn four again. But the battle, the chase is on. We, we do really want to catch the guys in front. We're 1.2 behind them and, you know, all but it, with a sniff of the draft with Budgeon in front. You see, I've been taking a, a tighter line through that second to last corner there at turn eight. Uh, it seems to work for me, although it's not necessarily the, the classic line. It is one watching the telemetry. You see Budgeon misses the apex there at the final corner, allows me to maximize use of the draft and pull in a tenth or so uh, this truncated start finish straight catches you out every single time this layout that run into turn one you're just getting yourself settled as you cross the line oh how was my time oh hang on i gotta stop i gotta pull this thing up and get it around and of course if you wash out to any great degree it's so easy to get the the outside rear tire on the grass and, and then you're just gone. The back of the car becomes the front and she's all over. Having said that, we're still, and we lost a bit of time through that poor run uh, through turn one, but we're still in this. Budging now, what's he, one and, I'm going to say one and a half behind, so he's dropped a bit of time to the guys in front. With Perez on front, the other two not challenging him. Uh, it's Christian Perez on front, I should say. He, uh, yeah, I'm really just now eyes forward, trying to keep uh, budging in my sights and see what we can do there. But also I'm mindful that Luquette has dropped another half a second back. I don't know what his week's been like, whether work's been busy or what, but um, qualified poorly. Uh, and at, in the early stages at least, uh, just dropping back. And again, mistake through turn one. I don't know, maybe he's a bit light on practice or what, but... In my mind, at this stage of the race, Ronnie, on lap five, I'm thinking, all right, just sit behind Kevin. Uh, I don't think we're going to catch the front guys unless there's a mistake. Um, although we're kind of, yeah, about 1.4, 1.5 behind. The gap's holding. The tight, the times here, I should say, are so tight. You see Kevin yeah, takes the wide entry there into six through seven now. Yeah, and that one I didn't hit very well. I was a bit off my apex there and off my line. Probably a combination of cold tyres, uh, a little bit of understeer in the draft, and just, you know, I didn't take the corner very well. Speaking of not taking corners well, again, Kevin misses that final apex. Look at the run I've got here. Now, I was perfectly happy to sit behind Kevin, but when a mistake's made, I think, you know, particularly at a track like this, you just, you just got to do it. And if you're on the other end of the mistake, as in you've made it, my view is you just take your medicine. Um, typically, it depends. If, it, if it's in the last couple of laps of the race, then you know all bets are off. You've got to fight for every fight for everything you you got or everything you want at the end of the race. Kiss that apex at three. That's not what you want. That curbing will unsettle you. But that mistake by Kevin and the overtake that I subsequently made as a result, um, yeah, that cost us more time. We're now two seconds behind, and all hope is pretty lost to that front pack and it's now just a matter of the, t the things that I was thinking about was get to the finish line on the last lap as quickly as we can uh, with a view to maybe staying ahead of Manu Luketa in, in P6 because um, honestly he was he was the big threat to what is the biggest race of the week for me at this point and my, my best result here barring incident is Kevin I didn't make a mistake there I, I backed right out Kevin uh, obviously came into it with a slightly different mindset to me um, I don't know if he thinks that um, the leapfrog is quicker there or what my, my view on it is uh, and it's okay to have differing views on it my view on it is I'll just sit let him do his thing and then only go past if there's a if there's a, uh, a mistake involved. Uh, but Kevin obviously thinks, either he thinks he's faster than me, which is a good mindset to have. I had the same thing. I was thinking I was quicker too, but that's a racer's mindset. Um, either he thinks he's quicker than me or he thinks a leapfrog uh, leap is faster. Both of which uh, can be true at any given track. Um, 
I put some laps in here this week. I was relatively confident in my pace. Went toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with uh, Christian Perez the race before here, and I, oh, he just, just got me on the line. I think it was about a hundredth between us or something like that. It was, it was a good fun race. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm just staying big in Kevin's mirrors, uh, and I'm practicing, I have to admit, uh, finding the marker, the reference points into turn one. It's very, very difficult here. The references are, are, are challenging enough as it is without being in a, in a pack. So. Um, really sort of again assessing what this conversation is going to be like Kevin makes a big mistake and I was half thinking oh I've got do I push the point or then I, I immediately went no no mine is behind us by two seconds if we're going to battle I've got to leave it late because we are, don't get me wrong we are going to battle at some point uh, is my mindset here but um, again I'm thinking okay what's the fastest way to the flag to keep Manu out of it so at this point, you see, I'll pull out of the draft. My thinking here was, okay, maybe Kevin thinks that uh, I'm attacking him all the time. Maybe I'm a bit too close or large in his mirrors or whatever. So immediately I thought, all right, well, let's take the pressure off. Let's just show him with, with non-verbal communication um, that I'm no threat. He knows I'll be a threat later in the race, assuming we're still together. But at this stage of the race, Kevin, just run your laps. Let's minimise the mistakes and let's uh, stay ahead of Manu. He's caught us a tenth on that last lap based on the mistake through down here at turn four that Kevin made last lap. Only cost us a tenth, tenth and a half, which was good, uh, all things considered. But my big concern is that uh, Luketa finds his pace at some stage in the race uh, and closes the gap to the point where it's a, it's a real problem for us. And, my P4, or even P5 opportunity would be at risk at that point. So I'm kind of doing the recovery thing, even though we're in the top five. Um, this was only a, I think it was a 4,100 strength of field, so not as high as it has been in previous weeks. So the points weren't as big as I'm trying to chase this season. So P5, I've got to admit, I was a little bit disappointed to be sitting in P5 and no chance of moving uh, beyond P4 incidents notwithstanding. So uh, still trying to keep my head in the game, uh, maximise what I can get out of this one. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I kept a race up my sleeve to race the uh, warm-up race to SNL on the Sunday, just in case something uh, came a cropper here, which, you know, P4 or 5 in a race like this, really not too much a cropper, but... Uh, yeah, not certainly not what I'm what I'm chasing this season. Is uh, we're, we're keeping that gap between us and Manu pretty steady, so he hasn't quite found his legs. Although he's got a two-second gap on P7, so uh, yeah, maybe this is where he starts uh, finding his legs. As the guys out in front are now oh, the better part of nearly three seconds ahead of us, uh, 2.8 ahead of uh, Budgeon. And again, you can see I'm just showing. Dude, I'm no threat. Just run your laps. Let's stay ahead of Manu. And I think that's an important um, strategic decision to recognise here. There's two things, right? My primary goal here is to maximise my chances of finishing in P4. Because, as I said, barring incident, uh, P4 is the goal at this point in the race. Now, two things I need to do that. I need... Uh, to be in a position to battle with Kevin at the end, so run our laps clean, no incidents, all the rest of it. Uh, and secondly, to stay ahead of Luketa, who's a big threat. He's one of the top drivers in the world in terms of his pace and, and his skill on track. Uh, and he, for whatever reason, was a bit down on pace this week. Uh, but uh, good drive, a good driver like Manu will find his pace during a race. Uh, if he hasn't done much practice during the week and he's still sitting in P6 and, and lapping as fast as anyone out there. Imagine what he's going to do once the tyres come up and he gets a feel for it. So, yeah, look, they were the, that was the thing that I was thinking about and a strategic decision around the context of where we are in a race. And I think that's an important thing to think about for myself and maybe others is, OK, how have the cards fallen this race uh, and how do I maximise my result? And so they were the things I was thinking about. Speed flag to flag and uh, keeping Manu behind us. And hopefully those things combined 
uh, will get us a, pay, a shot at P4, if not uh, P4 itself. And, um, and for now, what that means is sticking with Kevin, but not threatening him, not f trying to force him into a mistake. Because this track, oh, it's, it's so much fun in trying to get a pass, but you've got, really got to earn it. It's uh, one of those tracks that I call a pressure to pass track. There's no draft to pass, because as you see, this is the longest straight here, and you get to sniff fifth for half a moment, but uh, not much more. You're straight back down the gears. And realistically, a lot of people talk about the skip and the draft in it, in the skippy, but uh, honestly, if you don't have a long run in fifth gear, then it's little more than uh, keeping you in touch and allowing you to put pressure on the guy in front and try and uh, force a mistake, which is fine for the last few laps, but in the overall strategy for, to, for this race, um, not what I want to do. Give it the last three or so laps, absolutely try and force a mistake, but for now, let's go fast. Let's stay ahead of Manu, and you can see at this point we're still 1.9 seconds ahead of Manu, and that's uh, that gap's holding station, which is a good sign. So the boys out in front, they're gone. They're out to, what's that, well over three seconds now. 3.2-ish, 3.3-ish uh, in front of Kevin. Let's see again. I'm just staying well clear out of the way. The whole time, whilst I'm not driving in the relative and I'm not driving in my mirrors, uh, I am thinking about our position in the race because we've gone past halfway, 10 to go. And by now I'm starting to think, all right, where and when do we attack Kevin? We're looking for the weak spots. He's had a couple of mistakes through turn four here. Nice and clean that time. And he had uh, a couple of less than ideal runs through the final corner, which of course is really, really important in the context of this track. And through here, I felt like I had a bit of an edge. So I'm just taking a slightly tighter line through there. And whether it be for that or for the draft, the tighter line probably facilitated a bit by the understeer of being in draft. So, um, but then ultimately I'm looking at some point, beautiful line by Kevin there that time, beautiful. Uh, at some point to try and force him into a mistake through one of the final couple of corners. Because whilst turn one here might be the primary opportunity that you try and manufacture a pass, it can often lead to side-by-side uh, -side action down this section of the track through from turn one all the way down into turn four at the hairpin and ultimately even you can go through the twisties side-by-side um, -side. but typically if you're side-by-side -side here and again Kevin makes a bit of a mistake there not as bad as previously you can end up side-by-side -side here uh, and a lot of the moves that start at turn one finish at turn five um, so, and they, they actually get set up here at turn eight. Um, you, so you can set up a move at turn five from turn eight the lap before, uh, sometimes through turn nine if you've got the sort of pressure. But if you're side by side here, often the action won't finish until five, turn five the next lap. Kevin, less than ideal run, but remarkably he went defensive. He made the mistake but he wanted to, no, he backed out. I take it back, he backed out. I thought he wasn't gonna take his medicine there, but he did. So I think he's probably realized that, hey, I'm not gonna attack unless you make a mistake. Uh, that sudden shift to the right got me a bit surprised, but he was probably just trying to keep momentum. Again, I'm talking like I know what's going on in his head. But you see, that did cost us a bit of time. And while the, the time is static between Manu and me. There's also half a second. And you see, straight away I thought, oh, has Kevin rattled or have I actually got some pace on him? But the trouble was, you can see the difference between Kevin and I is about 0.6. That means Manu Luquette is about 1.1, 1.2 behind. And that's a sniff of draft. That is absolutely a sniff of draft at about 1.1. You can't do much with it if you don't have pace but if you've got 1.1 and you've got pace then you're in draft and you see mine is just that oh he's just on the edge of 1.1 you see i thought i had a bit of a chance maybe if, if if i put a few corners together put a bit of pressure on kevin's pace uh maybe he might get a bit ragged and 
maybe if we did happen to bring Manu back into it, Manu and Kevin go toe to toe and I drive away. Wouldn't that be ideal? That'd just be brilliant. But uh, <laughs> that was what I was thinking at this point as I chucked it into four. Did you see that? The rear of the car absolutely wanted to get it let go. I was pushing really hard here. Not to the point of overdriving, but just the tyres are up. We're 17 laps in, or 16 and a half, and I know you can push the car there, and I was just doing whatever I could to make a gap. And you can see, if nothing else, see Kevin taking the, uh, the line on the inside there, showing he's no threat. Interesting how, uh, how it changes, right? You're thinking in a race. He's caught back up, but you can see we've put a little bit we put a tenth on Manu that lap it was 1.2 behind but then oh I thought Kevin was coming there but he uh he obviously carries a slightly different mindset to me trying to force a mistake to get back back by rather than uh pushing although he might have thought uh it's time to turn the wick up a little bit I held my line over to the right just to see uh if Kevin was coming there because uh, I would have defended probably on the uh inside of turn three down into turn four but Kevin uh, backed out he's playing the game which we both are now with uh, Luketa about 1.3 seconds 1.2 and, and a half behind uh, behind Kevin we're still out of range but he's a lot closer so we can't afford more mistakes in all honesty uh, and whilst an overtaking move isn't a mistake, it is it is slow. So in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna run my laps. I'm gonna run clean and hard and fast as I can. Let's see what Kevin does. He pulled out and pulled back in again, which is good. But I'm starting to wonder how long, how long he'll keep doing that before he wants to be on front because. It is probably easier to defend than it is to overtake here, although the peculiar nature of this next series of corners here at through four and five in particular uh, means that potentially non-traditional lines like the inside at four you would think would be the way to defend, but you can get a good drive around the outside of four that sets you up through that corner we just went through there at five to get the overtake done. So yeah, there's a lot to think about. See again, I've taken quite a narrow line through there, hit a lot of the curb at eight, and a lot of the exit curb at, at the exit at eight there. You've got to be careful there. A right, uh, sorry, the outside rear tire on the grass there, and you, you're off into never never. Spat across the uh, far side of the track, and sometimes into the woods. Kevin's a lot closer here, and makes the move. And I, at this point, I did back out. We've got four to go as we start a lap 20 but uh, and that's well and truly brought Manu back into the draft and that's the bit I was worried about yeah look my view is obviously a little different that the draft to pass is leapfrogging is not as quick as it used to be in the skips um, but I imagine it's a combination of that and uh, Kevin liking to lead like I said that racer's mindset that says hey I'm faster I can get us away from Manu quicker than you can although Manu is now absolutely Got a, a good sniff of draft. He seems to be struggling through the twisties though. He dropped half a tenth there. Yeah, that racer's mindset. And again, I'm I'm not showing any sort of attack there. Although Kevin may be starting to wonder because he was a little bit towards the centre of the track there, thinking about defending. So with three to go. Manu's about a second behind. I've kind of uh, and I said to Kevin on the radio, "Dude, you're blinking. Careful." <laughs> Sort of put me off thinking about overtaking uh, before absolutely necessary even though already I was thinking I'll wait until uh, sort of the last couple which we're on now um, so I don't bring Manu back into it but Manu's definitely back into it now uh, I was a bit slow through turn one and that's really invited him back into the party again hammering down through the gears you've got to be careful not to blow your engine into four but use maximize the engine braking at the same time. So this is where I'm starting to think, all right, this is where we've got to attack. Manu's already in the draft. There's nothing I can do about that. But I've got to uh, attack and see if I can't get P4. So it's not going to be this lap, so it's going to be uh, the last 
couple. It's not going to be this one into turn one. I'm not close enough. Thinking, thinking. Show the nose. Nah, it's not time to go just yet. So realistically, it's down probably to turn one in the final corner. Manu's now six tenths behind, six and a half tenths behind. This lap will bring him right back in touch, depending on how we go. Hold fourth, right on the limit. Down through three. Yeah, nice rotation there through four. Brings me right up on the back of Kevin. He holds a nice tight line through there, opens out the wheel. You see I hold that tighter line through six and uh, five and six, or six and seven now as we come through eight. See, see the drive I get out there? Like I said, whether it's the tighter line or not. And this is where we go. I'm trying to disrupt the run through here so I get the inside at one and then the inside at five, if you can believe it. So I've set that up on the exit of eight, the second last corner. And I've just got enough so that the spotter hasn't called clear. Manu straight away looking to get involved here. You can see all it took was two corners side by side and Manu's right back in this. Keep Kevin a little tight there through the kink. On the run down into turn three, Manu. I'm staying tight on the right so Manu doesn't look come up the inside. And I really want to hold the outside here because if I can hold the outside here, I'll be on the inside at turn five. But no, Kevin's clear and I have to see the corner. But I'm tight through five. And then Manu, oh, Manu thought he had a look up the inside. Gives me a little nudge up the back. And Kevin's gone. Kevin's gone. Manu's conceded the position, I think. And uh, we've lost our shot at P4. So we'll have a look at that one too. Lap 2 and lap 23. The white flag lap as Kevin sails across to take out P5. Gee, the race goes quick. It's 23 laps, but they're... they're and it wasn't a lot of overtaking or anything, but it was it was pretty hectic in my mind anyway. Right? My mind had it <laughs> fully hectic. <laughs> anyway, let's um let's grab a look at um, the race results quickly, and then we'll take a look at those couple of incidents. Christian Perez took it out from his brother David. Uh, car number nineteen. Uh, interesting. I, don't, I think he might be the younger brother. I'm not sure. But uh, certainly pace runs in the Perez family. Takumi Yamato held on for some good points uh, and a good result in P3. But Kevin, for Nippy Racing, Kevin Budgeon, he took out the battle between he and myself for P4. I got a top five, which I was disappointed with. But, um, you know, uh, I'm pushing myself to be uh, up near the front this, this season and uh, that was not where I was tonight uh and you know I'll, I'll try and get better next time Manu Luketa fought his way up uh four positions to finish in six and I have to make a mention of David Palakwa who uh dipped out in SNL I think he had internet connection issues but he started if you can believe it in 20th position and made it up to seventh that's a fair drive one to keep an eye out on absolutely now Fratini there down in uh, ninth position we'll go back and have a look at that um at that incident which uh, from memory was on lap two. So we'll go and find lap two. Yeah. All right. And then we will uh, grab, we will grab the, um, probably the chase view on that one, if I can find it. Chase, yeah. So this is the one where, um, this is Fratini here. Let's have a look. So I I made a big mistake in outbreak myself. Very common mistake here at uh, turn one. Uh, and I probably didn't take my own advice and didn't take my medicine well enough. I was prepared to see the corner, but you can see here, and I'm comfortable running the curbs here, but you can see the angle of my car versus the angle of Fratini's car. Fratini's in a much better uh, angle of rotation here to take this corner than I am and I'm always going to push wide there you see I'm riding the curb to be fair to myself Fratini hasn't left a great deal of room um, but you can see here at the point of contact uh, I was always going now he, he 
to you know to be nice or whatever he did um he did say there was a bit of net code and there is there but i think that's predictive net code i think i'm always going to hit him uh so I'll, I'll cop that one that's that's my fault i should have lifted a bit more and taken my medicine on that on that mistake at turn one and unfortunately the the price to be paid there ultimately was from fatini and uh, and I did apologise a few times uh, pr uh, during and after the race, and he seemed to to take it pretty well. He said he enjoyed the racing racing afterwards, had a good run, uh, and finished back in in ninth position. He did make some I rating, didn't cost him too much, but it did cost him what could have been a much better result. So that's one I'll I'll take on the chin and and learn from. Interestingly enough, uh, in a later race, in fact, in the warm up race to SNL. Um, the reverse happened at the next quarter and um, again uh, I probably I don't know I can't remember I didn't look too closely at it but uh, my race was well and truly over I was gunning for p2 and uh, just through this corner here uh, we were side by side again same two drivers and I got turned into the wall on the left unfortunately perhaps calm as a thing now this was the other incident now, if you look in this corner here, now what's the, uh, yeah, this will do. The far chase is probably a bit better. If you look into this corner, I really wanted to be, see, I gave too much room here. See the difference here between the room Fratini gave me and the room I gave Kevin? There's a lot more margin there, but it also costs me speed. Kevin doesn't come out as much. He does a better job on that curb than I did, but uh, I left so much space and it cost me the run. And I'll, and you can see here, because I can see Manu looming large in my mirrors, I actually hold the right-hand side of the track a bit longer. Uh, and I think Manu's trying to get in my head to do exactly that. And then you'll see he shifts right over to open up the corner. And my run is compromised. I would much rather be half a car width over to the left. Uh, and then because I'm trying to catch the car because the car, I didn't open up the corner as much. My run down here is compromised. I break later, but not probably late enough. Kevin holds a good line on the inside, and I wash out a bit. Now, what that meant was, was Kevin got through, as we saw. And then look. Look at the difference here. Kevin's got the, the right racing line. manu has got the right racing line, and I'm nowhere. Uh, I'm two by two with two different cars here, all the twos. What that means is... Manu's expecting me on this tighter angle to wash out further to the outside because of the line that I'm attacking the corner on, which is to be expected. However, I managed to keep my lane here and realistically he's driving for a gap that's not gonna there, not gonna be there. The other thing that he probably doesn't know is that I tend to see see how Kevin runs really wide there. Uh, a lot of people take that line. I tend to take a tighter line through there. And I take an, uh, an even tighter line than I typically would here because I know Manu wants to look up the inside there and maybe get the inside run into the second last corner. Now, I think I don't think there was a gap there. Uh, Manu is the ra being the racer that he is. Uh, I didn't get a call certainly of spotter until till I hit it, uh, until I got the nudge there. Uh, last lap, no hard feelings. Um, yeah, just a more or less just a racing incident. I don't know how people see it. Feel free to have your say in the comments below. I'll be interested to know. I'm always looking to learn from these things. Contextually, perhaps he expected me to go wider, um, as you naturally might, but I managed to hold the line. It's quite a long, slow corner, uh, and I was probably a bit, obviously a bit later on the gas because of my tighter line, but I don't think there's ever going to be a gap there. Uh, like you would expect simply because of the angle of my car but that's hard to judge and in the context of the final lap uh, that's uh, that's what happens anyway so speaking of championships and all the rest of it let's go take a look at the results for this one as you can see uh, down in fifth position I only got 183 points, which is below my target of 200 a week. I want to score 1,600 points um, this season. So, on average, uh, I'm I'm probably because I've got a couple of good weeks under my belt. Uh, I'm still on that average, but I'm hoping, if you can believe it, 183 point round will be a drop round for me. But um, <laughs> it's not been uh, uh, something I would have expected to say. Uh, and seasons gone by. Now you may remember last week. 
I was sitting in P4 this week. I'm still in P4 uh, in the championship overall. A um, few folk not having strong weeks other than Lucchetti. See, I was only... I was in P4 by, I think, 15 or 16 points, and now I'm in P4 by, what's that, 22, 62 points. Uh, Luketa having not his strongest week by any means, but certainly strong enough to take the championship lead from Sasaki, who drops four positions down to P5. Uh, Farinas, uh, and Adrian Farinas Rodriguez, on the back of winning SNL uh, on Sunday night, jumps into the top three uh, with uh, some... Great Augusto. Uh, he and uh, Perez had a great race for SNL, which was good. All right, folks, that might do us. Thank you for tuning in to this continuing journey of uh, the top split racing for uh, for Season 3 2022. We're going to see how this tilt goes through to the end. Good races and bad. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Well, I don't win too often, so <laughs> more often than not, it's... Uh, just getting the points that we can. But anyway, folks, make sure you check us out. Top Split TV on Twitch on a Sunday night for the Sunday Night Lights broadcast, 9.15 p.m. Australian Eastern Time, which is GMT plus 10 at the moment. Uh, the best skippy racing in town. But thank you again for joining us. Until next time, I'm Alex McKellar, and I will say ciao for now. <laughs>